In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your Scratch games 10 times better with just a little bit of added animation. So I'm in Scratch right now, and I'm going to choose three characters from the Scratch Sprites tab. So one of them I think is gonna be the batter right here. So we can have her swinging a bat as sort of an attack animation. And the next one I think is going to be Frank. I'm going to put him right there in the screen too. And the last one, finally, I'm going to choose sort of a weapon, the magic wand right here. And now we have those three characters. So first off, I'm gonna start with the batter. And if we go to costumes, she already has a couple of preset costumes and we might actually want to use some of those. We can use the first three. I'm just going to delete the last frame. Okay, so now we can start animating. So first up, we're going to add something called an anticipation frame. This basically is just a frame where the character is about to wind up to do something. This could be an anticipation frame for when she's about to swing. So it just gives the audience a clue of what the character is about to do. I'm going to flip her arms around right here so that her attack animation looks a little bit better. Rotate the bat up. So she's sort of attacking in this direction. And now we just need to smooth out her action. So I'm going to duplicate the first frame and right here, move around and rotate the different parts of the sprite. She's winding up to swing. And now that we have these right here, we need the attack frame. So right here, I think that can be her attack frame. And we're never actually going to see the bat passing through the front. And that just makes the animation feel a lot stronger. Let me just flip all the costumes around because it's getting kind of confusing. And now we need cooldown for her animation. So right after she swung, a real person wouldn't just stop there, right? So let's duplicate that frame and add a little bit of action right after. Just move the frames a little bit down just so that she's reacting to the swing that she just did. All right, and I think I'm going to copy and paste her face over here. So I'm gonna put it right here. So after her action is done, she's just gonna look forward. And right here where she's swinging the ball, she can actually stretch out a little bit. So it looks kind of like she's attacking in front of her. Now we want a sort of effect to, to really know that the bat is swinging. So right here in the middle frame, number three, pick the color of that baseball bat, add a frame, like a big blob right here, but that makes it look like she's swinging the bat really fast. And on that frame right after, add that bat swinging effect, move it forward a little bit. And on the last frame, we can just like put a little dot or just leave it. So let me duplicate that last frame and delete that. Can just move the bat a little after this. I want to move the head on the last frame a little bit so that she sort of smooths out the action. So now let's go to code and we want to see our animation. So I'm going to drag out a events block and a when space key press. So we can actually use D for the attack, I think. Put a repeat 10 and a wait seconds block. And then finally go to looks and the next costume and the switch costume. So we want when D key pressed, we want batter A or the first costume to show. And then we wanna repeat the number of costumes. So one, two, three, four, five. We wanna repeat five and wait 0 0.06 seconds, I think. So now if we press D and play back our animation, we just did that in about five frames. So I could adjust the timing right here and her attacking is now kind of instant. All right, so now let's move on to Frank. So right here, let's go to costumes and I wanna use these two frames. So Frank A and Frank C. I'll just delete B and D. And I think he's gonna be jumping up into the air and stomping. So we have these two frames. Remember the second frame is going to be our end frame. So he's up into air here and we can have him on the ground after. So he sort of ground stomps. He's jumping up into the air. That's our first and second frame. Let me duplicate that last frame. So frame two, now it's frame three. And now let me add him back on the ground. So try to place his feet on the ground right here. And this is his frame when he jumped and hit the ground. His arms are sort of going down and I wanna move his foot down. Just grab the whole character, 
stretch him out horizontally and then vertically. So he's squashed down right here. And I wanna move his foot back. So his foot was in the front. Now I can just click this backwards button and his foot will now go to the back. Okay, so he sort of jumped up into the air, then hit the ground really hard. I can adjust his arms a little bit and maybe even flip them upside down. Okay, so he hit the ground like this. All right, so now let's add our in-between frames. So this anticipation frame, he's going to be preparing to jump from the duplicated frame and sort of warp them like he is preparing to jump. And whenever you're preparing to jump, you sort of crouch down, right? There's four frames right now. We need an after frame. So this is the, the cool down frame. So let's duplicate that. And he's going to be reverting to his normal pose. So now let's stretch him up a little bit. And now we can lower his arms a little bit. So remember he's cooling down. So we can duplicate frame three and let's move his leg up a lot. So he's sort of stomping with this leg. So select his whole body and move him up a frame, stretch him and squash him. So he's stretched vertically. Now right here where he hit the ground, I can move his whole body down even more. Okay, and we might need an extra cooldown frame. So let's do that, duplicate that frame and then move him up. So he cooled down a little bit more. And I think we can just copy the batter's code. So let's click on batter and drag the code over. And we want to switch costume to Frank A or costume one. Repeat one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to repeat six frames for the next costume. If we play that back, you can see Frank has a pretty cool jump animation. And something that we could add to make it even cooler is remember that batting effect we did. So see that effect, it's sort of hidden behind Frank. We can add something like that to Frank. So when he hits the ground, we could add sort of dust rising up. So let me set the brush color to brown and go back into costumes. And we can add dust going up from around his ankles. And over the next frames, we can draw the dust clouds just fading away. So draw it moving up and away, but make sure that it's smaller. That really sells the effect that the dust is going away. So duplicate the last frame and make it so the dust is completely gone. And just make sure that it's repeat seven because we just added a frame. All right, nice, really nice. So now let's move on to magic wand right here. And we're going to make our last frame right here. So let's duplicate it. And I want the wand to sort of have built up those lightning bolts. Then I want a giant a giant laser beam shooting out. So let me copy the color of those lightning bolts right here. And there's a giant bubble right here. So let's draw that. And then we can draw like sort of a laser beam shooting out. So let's duplicate this frame where the beam is fully formed and just make it last a little bit longer. So I'm gonna stretch it out just to add some sort of change so there's not a big stutter in that animation. And make some code so we can see our animation. Now let's copy over the code from our Frank. And I think I'm gonna use space as an attack key. Switch costume to magic wand, repeat seven. And now let's play that back. So basically we learned how to make static sprites into moving dynamic characters and you can use these in any game. You can use this technique in any game that you're trying to make. So thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.